let's review the content of this session. In this session, we went through chapter three, decision structure of the textbook. We started by introducing Boolean expression for the condition, for each, for a condition, whether a condition is met or not. We can use a Boolean expression to express whether it's a true or false. And for an if statement, the code block inside if statement will be executed if the Boolean expression is true. If the Boolean expression is false, the code block will not be executed. Comparing to if else statement, if the Boolean expression is true, then the if statement block will be executed. If the Boolean expression is false, the else block will be executed. And because each statement block is a code block by itself, you can also place if statement inside these blocks thus forming a nested if statement. Nested if statement can be really complex. That's when we introduce the if else if statement where you can have multiple conditions listed one by one in parallel for different conditional branching. We also mentioned the complexity this may introduce and we suggest you to always use curly brace to enclose your code block, even if there's only one single statement. Then we follow by logical operators, and, or, and not. How these are operated, how, how we can calculate the value of a Boolean expression. And, and remember in and, anytime there's a false, the whole statement is a false. For or, Anytime there is a true, the whole statement is, uh, the whole expression is true. Then we talk about string object comparison. String variables are reference variables, which contains the address of the string. So you cannot directly use relational operator like greater than or less than or equal to to compare string. Instead, you need to use string class methods, equals and compare to, to compare strings. And if you want to compare string with uh, ignoring case, there are corresponding methods too. We introduce the conditional operator and I want you to keep it simple. Do not over, uh, abuse it. Use it only in the simplest situation. And we have a switch statement where for expression, we can set up different branching based on the value, the execution flow will go to that particular branch. And then the use of break in, the, in each case is mentioned. Every case starts at every time when you have an expression matching, the execution starts at the case statement, matching case statement, and finishes only when it runs into a break. Not when the case statement is ended. And this can be useful when you have multiple case statements with the same action uh, logic. And finally, we go over displaying formatted output with system print F and the string dot format. Now let's go through homework for this week. I'm going to city tech account. Oops. Yeah, and go to Blackboard. I'm going to go into our course and uh, go into weekly activities. And you will see week two as activity. And let's go to assignment two. Assignment two contains six questions, but actually four programming only. The first question asks you to write a program that prompts user to enter a number within the range one to 10. The program should display the Roman numerical version of that number. If the number is outside the range of one to 10, the program should display an error message. 
This is question one. Question two asks you to take a screenshot of an eclipse for Q1, including the code and your sample output. Question three is the same question as Q1, but you switch statement. In Q1, I ask you to use if else if statement. In Q3, you should use switch statement. And Q4 is to take a screenshot of your eclipse for Q3. I'm sorry, this should be Q3. I will modify this very soon. And the question five is another if else statement, two pound or less, over two pound, but more than six pound, no more than six pound, six pound to no more than 10 pound, et cetera, et cetera. And the question six is zero book, one book, two book, three book, four book, and apparently you will be thinking about switch. For question five and the question six, you only need to provide your program. Now I want to explain why I want you to always take a screenshot because I want you to really put your hands in Eclipse and make sure you can run things within Eclipse and get desired result. All right, so, so much is for this uh, session.